Hi guys, let me introduce the contents of this video. Uh, first, as always, I have the quiz for you. Second, sign convention on the direction of acceleration and a braking force. Third, condition of, condition of the optimum acceleration and the braking force distribution curve. Fourth, relationship between uh, tire friction force and gravitational acceleration. Fifth, a basic equation uh, for the optimum force distribution curve. A sixth, a practical example uh, for a car uh, with Excel program. A seventh, analysis of the optimum force distribution curve. Eighth, theoretical base uh, for, for the important values of the curve. Ninth, answer to the quiz. The tenth, we end up with the conclusion. Here is a quiz for you. A car has the data as follows. Maximum power is 320 PS per 6500 RPM. Maximum torque is 40 kg meta per 4800 RPM. CG height is 0.283 meter. A vehicle weight is uh, 1200 kg. Uh, for the CG location, Elsa Web and Elsa Bar has the same value of 1.45 meter. In other words, CG is at the middle of the wheelbase. Then, uh, what is the key factor of minimum time for 0 to 100 kg per hour? Number 1. Maximum power. Number 2. Maximum torque. Number 3. CG height. Number 4. Tire friction coefficient mu. This quiz uh, looks very complex, but easy. Uh, did you have an answer? Here, I will explain sign convention and the definition of the forces. Compared with the uh, previous video, sign convention is redefined to explain uh, both of acceleration and the braking. Plus sign is for acceleration, minus sign is for braking. Then, the shape of the brake force distribution graph uh, moves from upper right quadrant it was like this to lower left quadrant. It is a point symmetry of the previous one as shown as here. And finally, in the first video, I used the F sub CF for the sum of the front two wheels and F sub CR for the sum of the rear two wheels. But from now on, Every reaction force is per one wheel, not for the two wheels. The corresponding forces are F sub XF, F sub XR, F sub CF, F sub CR, F sub YF, F sub YR. Please don't be confused. I'm very sorry about that. In the optimum case of a longitudinal force distribution, all the tire friction coefficients mu are the same at all four wheels. And in addition to that, all four tires reach their maximum forces at the same time. Uh, there is no need to worry about any yawing moment except for the laterally big offset of CG. Explained in the previous video, the vehicle weight can be expressed as two equations here. A1 and A2, in which A is a plus for acceleration and the minus in braking. A front weight decreases in acceleration and increases in braking. Then we are ready to obtain simple expression when all the tire friction coefficients mu is the same 
at the four at the all four wheels. Newton's law says that a sum of reaction forces should be equal to the vehicle inertia force due to the acceleration. So uh, we have equation three. Then substituting a1 and a2 equation here uh, for f sub c f plus f sub c r of equation a3 we can get the simple equation here vehicle acceleration is equal to tire friction coefficient multiplied by gravitational acceleration g therefore we can end up with the simple equation equation mu is equal equal to the ratio of vehicle acceleration to gravitational acceleration g which is equation a5 now we are ready to develop the equation of a longitudinal force distribution assuming that tire friction coefficient mu is the same value at all four wheels and all four tires reach their maximum forces at the same time then we have two equations b1 and b2 at the front wheels a front longitudinal force f sub xf is equal to the tire friction coefficient mu times a front vertical force f sub zf here at the rear wheels, a rear longitudinal force F sub XR is equal to the tire friction coefficient mu times vertical force F sub CR. Substituting these two equations for F sub ZF and F sub CR of equation A1 and equation A2 in the previous slide, and also employing the relationship tire friction coefficient mu is equal to the ratio of a to g uh, we can have two equations b3 and b4 in these two equations we cannot we cannot see the expression of tire coefficient mu because a tire friction coefficient mu have already been substituted for the ratio of a to g uh, dividing uh, b3 and b4 uh, by vehicle weight mg to make the longitudinal forces dimensionless uh, then uh, we can obtain two normalized longitudinal force equations for front and rear wheels which is equation b5 and b6 as a result we have a final equation to draw the optimum longitudinal force distribution curve uh, these two equations here here are the quadratic functions of ratio of the vehicle acceleration uh, to the gravitational acceleration as you can see there is no term of vehicle weight in the right side of equations no vehicle weight terms here they have only geometric data and the ratio of acceleration Let's prepare the Excel sheet to make the optimum longitudinal force distribution curve. All we need are the geometry data for, for the optimum longitudinal force distribution curve. No data is required for the weight. Here we have an example of the car data set for geometry. CG height h is equal to 0.436 meter 
wheelbase L is equal to 2.805 meter and the longitudinal distance from CG to front wheels L sub F is equal to 1.1 to 2 meter and finally the longitudinal distance from CG to the rear wheels L sub R is equal to 1.6 a 3 meter. Of course, don't forget to prepare two final equations for shaping the curve B7 and B8. And then, in the first step, let's put the data of wheelbase L, CG height H, and the L sub F, L sub R and G in the Excel sheet. In the second step, we calculate the ratio of A to G, uh, making B7 and B8 zero to find the limit of longitudinal motion. To calculate uh, these two values, 3.86 and minus 2.57, what are those two values? Here, 3.86 is the G units for front tire to lose the ground contact. And normally called tilting acceleration. Here. And minus 2.57 is the G units for rear tire to, lo to lose the ground contact and called tilting deceleration. Uh, we are going to draw the, uh, uh, the optimal longitudinal force distribution curve between, between <coughs> uh, those two values here. We have one variable in x-axis of ratio of a to g and the two variables of normalized front longitudinal force here and the normalized rear longitudinal force here. As a result, we can draw the braking and the acceleration force distribution curves. Uh, let me explain the details of this graph. A curve in the color of a royal blue here is for a front wheels. And the other one in the color of khaki is for rear wheels. We have a tilting acceleration here, at which the slope is half a, a ratio of L sub F to wheelbase L. The value of which is minus 0 0.2 here. And the tilting acceleration here at which the slope is the half of a ratio of L sub R to wheelbase L. Here. The value of which is minus 0 0.3 here. The normalized maximum force at the rear wheel in the braking reaches its maximum at half a ratio of L sub F to CG height H. Yeah. The value of which is minus 1.29. And the normalized maximum force at the front wheel in the acceleration reaches its maximum at the half a ratio of L sub R to CG height, of which value is 1.93. How do I know that? I will explain that clear in the next slide. In this slide, I will explain the theoretical base of the force distribution graph. How can we calculate the value of maximum forces for braking and acceleration? Uh, let's start with two equations, B7 and B8, we have obtained in the previous slide. The uh, maximum force at the front wheel in the acceleration can be obtained from the derivative 
of the equation B7. At the maximum, at the maximum, derivative of the normalized front uh, front longitudinal force with respect to G unit should be zero in this equation. Therefore, the G unit is equal to half a ratio of L sub R to CG height H, of which value is 1.93. The maximum force at the rear wheel in the braking can be obtained from the derivative of the equation B8. At the maximum, derivative of the normalized rear longitudinal force with respect to G unit should be zero in this equation. Therefore, the G unit is equal to half a ratio of L sub F to CG height H of which value is minus 1.29. Let's calculate the slope at the normalized force of the front wheel is equal to zero. And also, at the normalized force of the rear wheel is equal to zero. We have two equations, B7 and B8, we have, we have been familiar with. The slope at the point of normalized force of the front wheel equal to zero in the acceleration can be obtained from the derivative of the equation B7. From the equation B7, we have two rules. G unit is equal to zero. And the other one is L sub R divided by H. Substituting uh, those two values for G unit here. In the derivative equation of normalized force at the front wheel, we have two values which are half a ratio of L sub R to wheel base L, and the other one is minus half a ratio of L sub R to field base L. The absolute values of both are the same. In the similar way, the slope at the point of the normalized force of the uh, front equal to zero in the braking can be obtained from the derivative, derivative of the equation B8. From the equation B8, we have two roots the G, G unit equal to zero. The other one is minus L sub R divided by H. Substituting uh, those two values for G unit of the derivative of the normalized force equation at the real wheel here, uh, we have two values half a ratio of L sub R to wheel base L and the other one is minus half a ratio of L sub F to wheel base L. The absolute value of both are the same. Uh, let's find the answer of the quiz. I hope you guys hit the answer. The beaker acceleration can be expressed as the following equation. From the Newton's law, the force of acceleration is equal to the sum of the reaction forces in the longitudinal direction here. And those longitudinal forces can be expressed in terms of tire friction and the sum of the vertical reaction forces here. Therefore, we end up with the simple equation here. The acceleration A is equal to the tire friction coefficient mu times gravitational acceleration G. The car of the quiz has the big capacity of the powertrain 
and a relatively small car weight. But unfortunately, you cannot get the vehicle accelerate uh, with the excessive power uh, more than a equal to mu times g because tire friction cannot catch up with that excessive power. Therefore, the answer is number four, the friction coefficient mu. Uh, here we have the conclusion in this video. The longitudinal force distribution curve is exclusively determined by the geometric data of the vehicle. The maximum acceleration forces of the front wheels are the function of CG location. Maximum braking force of the rear wheels are also the function of CG location. With the enough powertrain capacity, the minimum time uh, for the given distance relies on tire friction force. Tilting acceleration and the tilting deceleration is inversely proportional to uh, the CG height and is proportional uh, to the distance uh, from the CG to the front axle and the rear axle respectively. Maximum acceleration force at the front wheel and the maximum braking force at the rear wheel are inversely proportional to the CG height and is proportional to the distance from the CG to the front wheel, front axle and to the rear axle respectively. If you enjoyed my video, please click the subscribe and the like to keep in touch with my new video. Uh, you can watch my previous videos if you have anything difficult to understand in this video. I explained principle of weight transfer in the previous video. And recently, I explained the longitudinal slip, which is the crucial factor of ABS and the EBD. You can find the deep knowledge on the effective radius, tire slip, and the behavior of a tire contact patch in the acceleration and the braking. I have a plan to publish one more video on the longitudinal slip because a lot of people ask many questions. Also, I recently explained the, the EBD and the optimum longitudinal force distribution, including EBD logic. That's the part 1 video of the optimum longitudinal force distribution. The next video coming soon will be the optimum longitudinal force distribution part 3. I will explain the equations for a new optimum distribution curve. And also I will explain the a practical example uh, with Excel program. And also, I will explain the effects of the uh, vehicle CG on the force distribution curve. See you next video. Goodbye, guys.